Rivers. And if you find you're tuning into a wave, well then I don't know much about the NSA. Hello everybody. Hello friends. Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And this is episode 164. 164. What's the topic? This is why is healing so hard? Great question. And isn't it the truth too? <laughs> mm-hmm. It cool. really is, yeah. Well, good. Before we hop into it, anything you want to talk about from last week? Yes. Last week we did, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Mm -hmm. And in that episode, I did a reading for Crystal and her dog, Dexter. <clears throat> so this is what Crystal had to say about the reading. <clears throat> Thank you. Great episode. And oh my goodness, you were spot on with Dexter. He was such an emotional support animal to everyone in the ho household, both human and feline. Total nanny dog. If I sat on the ground and cried or was upset, he would put his head on my chest and call me or give me hugs and physically pull me into him. Our black lab does that. It's too funny. <laughs> if the kids were in trouble, yeah. he'd run to their rooms with them and lay on their beds comforting them. You can spoon him all night and he wouldn't move an inch. He could have 1,000% been a service dog, but his love for everybody and not one single person would have prevented that. He loved every creature he ever met, but especially the ladies. For being such an amazing guard dog with a scary bark, he was so goofy and gentle. And yes, I found his hair out back on our deck recently and lost my mind. It was his yellow tan fur in a clump. A lot of times that they do that as one of their signs. It's wow. so interesting. Yeah. Even like months and months later, it mm -hmm. just <clears throat> it blows my mind. Um <laughs> And I know exactly what he was talking about for me to let go. I experienced a tremendous loss three years ago, and my animals beca became the equivalent of furniture to me, hardly, hardly noticing them. I stepped away from my nurturing motherly role with them for a good six months. Don't get me wrong. I did the basics, food and water and care. I still told them I loved them, but I pulled away, not intentionally, but everything around me just got so dark in the depths of my grief and sorrow, my partner had to pick up the bulk of the care and attention. I love Dexter dearly, and I really tried to show him that the last year of his life. Thank you both so much, and I can't begin to thank you enough. Thank cool. you, Crystal. Yeah, thanks, Crystal. Appreciate that. I'm glad that that reading resonated for you. Very cool. Yay. Okay, and then we answer two questions every week. So this question is, it's a little bit long, um, but I want to read it. This is from Brittany. Okay. And this is really big w with what's going on in our country right now, mm -hmm. which is why I want to talk about this. Okay. Brittany says, hey, Samantha, I didn't want to post publicly and start some fueled debate because the topic is so volatile at the moment, but I did want to explore safely our options and thoughts. Abortion is a huge issue in current politics in addition to social media. Mm -hmm. So in my personal life, I have experienced a close bond to the spirit that was is my child with every pregnancy. And with my youngest, I actually felt his spirit at conception, not during sex, but the next day I realized I ovulated and I know it's crazy sounding, but I recognized the moment I became pregnant. So for me in my pregnancies, I felt like the spirits of my children were attached to them or part of them, even as a cluster of cells. So for me being connected to them, if I had aborted, it would have felt like I was murdering my own child. Mm -hmm. That being said, I understand wholly that not every pregnancy is the same and sometimes there are extremely painful situations one cannot bear. As a professional nurse who most of my career has been in women's health, I have seen the aftermath of legal abortions gone wrong. If abortions are outlawed, history proves that women will seek to have them, and I can't imagine the health crisis and horror that will ensue when there is no legal regulated option and desperation and fear grow. I think examining all this introspectively, both spiritually, both spiritually, my experience is personal and professional. I can't help but feel that even if I don't agree with the choice, it's someone else's choice and not mine to make. But we can provide safe health care access and as a country, better preventative measures. 
Okay, so I digressed. My whole question was referring to the soul of a baby. If a mother chooses to abort, surely the soul must know that this is not the time or body for it or whatever the circumstances, right? I feel like sometimes a soul enters the baby's body at different times. Maybe it's not one gestational age fits all. I don't know why my mind takes me down these rabbit holes or why I felt to reach out to you. Maybe it just always seems a safe place for discussion. Mm -hmm. That's what we do this, yes. you know, is kind of those rabbit hole kind of questions, things mm -hmm. that you wish you could talk about, I think, in a conversation in a room full of people. Yep. But somebody might get offended or, you know, you're afraid. And, and so it makes sense that yep. But this is why we do this. Yeah. You know, I um, I posted this on our on our discussion group after she asked this question. Mm -hmm. I said right now it is obviously a big Abortion is a big topic in the United States. This week, we are going to focus our question part of the show on the topic. So we'd like to know how you feel about the subject. So I ask questions like, you know, are you pro-life, pro-choice? Do you know that within minutes of me posting this, we had one person leave the discussion group? Oh, really? Yeah. And you know what? That's okay. <clears throat> okay. Because some yeah. people just can't talk about these things. Right. And that's what we're here to do. Like, mm -hmm. we actually even had a comment on YouTube a while back when we were talking about political stuff saying, leave the politics alone. But the thing is, is we're here to talk about everything. We want to talk about it all, not just right. what people are comfortable talking about. Yes. You know? Absolutely. And I this, mean, I don't think there's any bad question. There's no dumb question. Um, it's, it's a discussion group, you know, it's a podcast that addresses maybe a lot of things our minds think and aren't sure if it's okay to ask. Yep. So getting back to this question, um, my personal belief, and I, I think Danny and I feel similarly on this is that the soul that is supposed to come into your life will. Mm -hmm. So, like, let's say that a woman has an abortion, that she chooses to have an abortion. She's not ready to have a child. That soul is not going to go away forever. Right. It's not done. It will come <clears throat> in when she decides that she is ready to have a child. Mm -hmm. These are all things that are kind of, I don't want to say, like, pre-planned, but maybe they are to a certain extent, you know? Um, w these are all lessons for us. And this is one reason I am very much pro-choice. Um, I've never had an abortion. I am thankful for that. But I'll be <clears throat> honest with you, if at, I got pregnant at 45 years old, I, I would. Mm -hmm. I absolutely would. So um, I'm definitely pro-choice. I believe that the universe throws us these things as challenges, as tests. Are you ready for a child? Um, can you handle like if a person is faced with a child, let's say that they um, find out that they're going to have a baby that has Down syndrome. What are they going to do? Are mm. they going to go through with it or not? That's all their private, right. Right. personal lessons. Right. And I don't feel like anybody should tell that woman or that couple or anything what they can or can't do. Yeah, I it's agree. it's not. This isn't religious based, you know. And if you're religious and you don't want to have an abortion, then don't have an abortion, right? You know. Well, I mean, what's next is to tell men that it's illegal for us to get vasectomies because we might potentially be, you know, robbing a life of a chance to come here. Right. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's. I totally agree with you. I think it's um, absolutely up to the woman. Every circumstance is different. It, it doesn't all fit into the same, you know, same yeah. spot every time. Um, so, and there's so many varying factors, uh, yes. like things like rape and incest and um, health uh, risks to the mother and or, you know, unborn child. Uh, yeah. I personally, honestly believe that um <clears throat> and here's an example is Samantha went to uh, a psychic many years ago for a reading that told her that there were two souls of children souls yes i don't I, let me not say children but two souls on the other side that were ready to come in to her life as her children if and when she was ready yes and she chose to never 
have those children herself biologically. That does not mean for me in my beliefs that those souls then cease to exist within Samantha's life or soul family. Right. No, they may not come into this life <clears throat> as a child, um, but they could very well be very prominent in the next life. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so on. Yeah. I also believe that personally that the soul does not enter the body until about three months to a year probably of life <clears throat> and this is based on my own experience of um what i've gone through as a parent what i've read stories that i've heard and that's just my personal belief so i believe that and that's for a couple of reasons one that they want to make sure that the body is good enough for the contract that they've set to come in to fulfill in this life and at the same time make sure that they themselves are actually ready to come in right yep yeah i agree like that they're ready for the commitment <clears throat> i agree yeah i think we need to separate body and soul they're two completely different things. Yes. Um, a soul can be ready to come in and the body isn't ready. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just the way that it goes. But yeah, the, the, um, I really do believe that we are supposed to do certain things in our life. And that this is one of those things that if a woman is faced with it, there's a reason why she's faced with it. And she's the one that has to kind of make that decision of where she's going to go with it. What yeah. is she going to do? And nobody else. And uh, going back to what you were saying about um, the souls coming in around, you know, like three months, I, I think about this and I, and I have asked my guides and, and kind of played around with this, like what actually happened? And if you think about it, why would we, why would a soul want to sit in a womb for nine months? And you're not even breathing. You're not, you, there's nothing happening. You're just developing. This is the right. body. Yeah. That's what I talk about when there's, there's the difference between the body and the right. soul. There's no soul there yet. Right. I really don't believe that the and soul how comes much, in. how many of us remember that period? Right. And I think that's also, to me, evidence of that it's not happening yet. Right. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Absolutely. Because that process is probably pretty traumatic. Yep. And oh, so yeah. why be there to experience that? Yeah. Sometimes you see pictures of little babies that look like little old people. And I love those. And it makes me wonder, like, because they look, they seem to be looking around like, I'm back here. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> like, what happened? Mm -hmm. How did I get back here? And mm -hmm. it makes you wonder, like, at that point, do you know what's going on? Right. But you don't remember because we don't remember as, as infants. Yes. But, but one other thing that I want to say, and I think that we talked about this briefly in the past is SIDS and how what my belief is that SIDS is the soul deciding it's just not ready to be here yet for right. whatever reason <clears throat> that it wants to take its contract back and maybe try again later. Yeah. Um, that's why we don't know what it is. That's why there's no physical right. cause. They can't find a physical cause because there isn't one. Right. Who was this that, that was this question was again? Uh, from? This was from Brittany. Oh, Brittany. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I believe that what Brittany, you were feeling is true. Yeah. You were feeling the spirit and the soul in my personal belief of the child at the moment of conception. But does that mean actually that the soul has entered the body or right. are you just psychically feeling a connection to this soul right. knowing. And I had similar experience, but with my daughter after she was born at about three months mm -hmm. where there was this real amazing connection with her when I was holding her and I could feel what felt like nerve electricity, nerve jolts mm -hmm. between the two of us. And this difference, like you were saying in this, presence uh -huh. her her um observational presence right was different from that point on right as if like i'm here yep 
you know? Yeah, that's crazy. I'm like, I'm here now and I'm soaking it all in. <laughs> it, before it was just more like you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. It's just a living thing. Right, exactly, yeah. And at that point for me is when like the personality, the soul yeah. came in. And yeah. so again, there was physical evidence for me to go off of with that situation than my own observations of my child from then on. But I, I do believe that you absolutely have a connection. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe we'll have to do a whole episode on this topic at some point, you know, yeah. um, cause this is a big topic and there's so much that we could talk about, but you know, the gist of it, when it comes to the topic itself, is everybody is entitled to their opinion, mm -hmm. but I have mine mm -hmm. and you have yours and I'll respect everybody's opinion. As, you know, we, that's what we should do. Just respect others' opinions. Yeah. And, you know, we're all entitled to that. Absolutely. Okay. One other quick question, because we always do two questions. So this one uh, is from Patricia. She said that she really liked our topic ideas and was wondering who comes up with them and how we come up with them. So I just wanted to explain real quick. Yeah. That when we started this show, we started writing down topics mm -hmm. and because we thought there's no way that we're going to be able to come up with hundreds of topics. Like, how long could this possibly go on for? Mm -hmm. Like, if you would have said that we would have been on on episode 164 and had a bunch of topics that were already ready, I would be like, no, whatever. But we started yeah. keeping this list and this list now probably has, I don't know. 75 episode possible possibilities. It's maybe. continuously growing. It's I continuously mean, cause we growing, spend yeah. a lot of time talking about, um, ideas, throwing it, mm -hmm. throw an idea out and we'll chat about it together. Um, and kind of go from there, but we have a list that we sort of pull from. Yeah. But we also try to do it in segments, I think, is what we've yes. tried to do. So Yeah, like themes. Yeah, or, themes yeah. or segments. So. Mm -hmm. But it's really, and, and sometimes we pull from other things we see or hear, but, you know, for the most part, we're just brainstorming between the two of us of what to do, you know? Yeah, and sometimes, too, I'll get just ideas out of nowhere. Like the other day I was driving and Bon Jovi, It's My Life, came mm -hmm. on. And I heard my mom go, that would be a good topic. And you know what? That is a great topic idea. Yeah. Sometimes um, they come organically like that, too. Yep. Yeah. So I put it on the list. There you yeah. go. But we have a very long list, and I don't <clears throat> think we'll ever run out of topics because the list keeps growing <laughs> yeah. and growing and growing. I do agree, though. I, I remember thinking, God, are we going to have a, like, how long can this go on for? Like, what are we going to talk about? Yep. At first, I was more concerned, can we talk for an hour? But I know we can do that. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a problem with that. That's for sure. <laughs> but yeah. but yeah. that's a great question. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Patricia. Thanks, Patricia. Um, and then let's do the reading. I do a reading every week. This is for Candace. She says, this is Samantha, my mama. She passed away in 2017. I am wondering if she approves of the big moves, changes I feel I need to make. So let's talk to Candace's mother, Samantha. I love your name. I know. First of all. <laughs> yeah, first of all. <laughs> let's get that out yeah. of the way. <laughs> okay. Mom is a very gentle, sweet soul. She was not the type to cause problems. Um, she has a contagious smile. She makes me smile. She's just very sweet. Um she also, there's a sadness here that I feel that she had in life because I feel like she did know that she was going to pass early and she limited herself in life to like, there were things she wanted to do, but instead of just going ahead and doing them, she said, no, I can't do that. And so there was a sadness in her that she never was going to be able to fulfill certain things that she wanted to fulfill. And so... Um, let's see what else she has to say. She's very proud of you. She says that you take a lot more risks and that's why she brought that up. You take a lot more risks than she does. And she's proud of you for that. Um, don't ever limit yourself. Don't ever, um, feel like you're not good enough because you are, you are worthy of more than you even imagine. What a sweet lady. She yeah, is. Very that's sweet so cool. Mom. 
um, she will never not be proud of you. Even if you make the worst mistake, she will still be proud of you because you'll learn from that mistake. Yep. So there's nothing that you can do to make her feel like she doesn't, you know, isn't proud of you. Yeah. Um, that's a mother's love for you. Let's see what else she has to say. Um, she, co- she comes back with brave. You are very brave to be making the decisions that you're making and making the choices um, and moving forward in your life in an area that is very scary for you, she's telling me. Um, you have thought long and hard about changes that need to be made in your life, and you're ready to make them, whatever that means. And she wants you to know that she is 100% on your side and will be by you the whole time, and she will guide you. And to please keep an eye out for the signs of the direction that she's trying to guide you. She says you are recognizing those more and more. Um, and so along this journey, she will help you by showing you more and more signs. Nice. So there we go. What a sweet woman you are, Samantha. Thank you for coming through. She's just like very loving. Like there's something that happens to me now when I connect to these spirits that didn't happen at first. And that is that I really feel their energy. I feel who they were as a person and, you know, were they calm? Were they hyper? Were they outgoing? Were they introverted? Like, I feel all of that in them. And for right. her, she's just such a sweet, mellow soul. Very mellow. I always picture them in my mind after, like, I picture it somehow mm-hmm. like a phone call. Mm-hmm. So, like, the phone hangs up and they turn around on their side. And are they just going... Oh my God! I got to talk to him. I yeah, got to right. Talk to him. I can't believe it. Did you hear it? I got. I did, you know, and like, there's a line full of people waiting for the phone. Yeah, and they're like, "That's great, Betty. Can you hurry up?" <laughs> <laughs> or Samantha, excuse me. <laughs> Move it along. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. Yeah. I always picture that in my head. Yeah, I know. I get similar visions like that. Um, one more thing before we give our info, we have a. Um, I have a, a friend, and she was a listener of our show that passed away. And I just wanted to, and I'm not going to cry, I wanted to give our condolences to um, my friend Lynn and her family. So Lynn, I've done a couple readings for on the show, actually, and we have answered her questions on the show. Um, Her dog, Sawyer, who was a chocolate lab (laughs) Sharpay mix, you might remember this reading, that he said that he was sniffing the rocks. Mm -hmm. That wasn't that long ago. I was looking for it in my notebook, Mm -hmm. but it must have been in a previous one. Um... The other day I was on Instagram and her daughter posted, I miss you, mom, gone too soon. And I was like, what are you talking about? 65 years old. She, I believe she was a vegan. If not, she was a vegetarian, took great care of herself or so I thought she, she hiked a lot and was very active. Um, and that was, so that was a really big shock. She's definitely not one I would have had on the list of people I expected yeah. to go soon. Um, that one has hit hard. But what's interesting about it is that now that I, I have experienced a few deaths of people close to me, I'm starting to recognize more and more how this works, you know? Mm-hmm. And shortly after I found out that she passed away, I asked her, what happened? How do you have a heart attack when you're 65 and you... And she said to me that she did not drink enough water, yeah. that she she did all these activities, but she wasn't staying hydrated. And this was a chronic problem. And because of it, her blood was too thick. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. And so I looked it up and it absolutely is a thing. Yeah. And um, the whole experience has been really weird. I've been learning her energy just by her coming in at random times. It's like it's very helpful. Um, but at the same time, I'm still very much in shock. So I wanted to, you know, give our condolences to her family. And yes. To... And on behalf of all the rest of us, we're sorry for the, your Thank loss. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, for your support and participation in what we do here while yes. you were here. Yes. And I'm sure you'll still support us from there. So. Oh, she does. Yeah. yeah. She says we, we're we doing important work, more important than we even realize. And she's Good. very much on our side. That's wonderful. So, yeah. Nice. 
So, all right, well, let's give our info, and then we can go on to the episode. Okay, go for it. Uh, If you want to have a reading by me, you can find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. You can schedule an appointment there. If you'd like to reach us at the show, we are spiritualjoneses at gmail.com or on social media at spiritualjoneses. Yay. And you, sir. Yes, if you like art, if you like music, rock and roll, pop, whatever, uh, I do both. And you can check out my art at djonesartcollection.com for the web, at djonesartcollection for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Yay. That's it for me. Fantastic. Very, very good. Yay. All right, then. Are we all ready? I'm ready. Cool. Episode 164, then. Why is healing so hard? Sorry for all the dog panting, and we don't normally record at night. It's nighttime, and so they're, these dogs are like, what are you guys Uncertain. doing? Yeah. <laughs> if everybody would just lay down and relax, we'll finish the episode. <laughs> yeah, they will. Anyways, um, healing is hard. It's very hard. Sometimes healing hurts as much as what you're healing from, like mm-hmm. the actual event itself. Sometimes healing is about breaking what didn't break all the way through. You know, you, you sometimes that that healing part of it itself will break your heart the rest of the way through. But you mm-hmm. that we sometimes need to go through that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we face things that hurt so bad that we don't realize the damage and what's been broken until retrospect. Yeah, that is very, very common. Um, we don't walk into healing thinking this is going to be fun. By any means that I don't think any of us think, you know, Uh, and and honestly, like I never really thought about that so much about the different stages of when you have something that happens to you and then you're kind of stuck in that, that phase of I'm just going to sit here for a while. You do have to make that choice Mm -hmm. that you're going to heal, that you're going to start to heal, whatever the situation Mm -hmm. is. And I think for a lot of us, that's that happens subconsciously. We don't even realize that we're doing that, maybe even, you know, while other times we're saying, this is it. I have to move on from this. I have to right. heal. I have to, you know, let this go, mm-hmm. whatever it may be that we're holding on to. Um, we usually resist or hesitate because we know that there's going to be pain involved and nobody wants to experience that kind of pain. Right. You know, it takes a <clears throat> lot of faith trust and strength to walk into healing knowing that it's going to hurt like hell. Mm-hmm. So why why is it so hard? One thing that in that list that is time. Yeah, time, absolutely. Time is of the utmost importance. It does something that you know probably it's as, it's as important as if you were to go to therapy to, to deal with it. Right. Or if you were taking a medication to help you with it. The time is just as important. It is. It's It really is the biggest part of the healing process, I think. And there's yeah. no given right amount of time for something, you know, to heal. Everything's different. Every situation is different. But I asked our listeners, what areas of your life have been the hardest to heal from? And the number one thing, looking through this, at 27% people said death of a pet over the death of a loved one or a friend, death of a pet. And I do think that there is something extra special hard about the loss of a pet Mm -hmm. that, that we forget about with people. Like with people, we can talk to them verbally. We can tell them, you know... Um, you know, even when it's sudden, we might have already had these converse, kind of conversations like, I'm sorry that I did this to yeah. you or I wish I could have done this differently. But when it comes to our animals, we don't get to say that to them. Yeah. So we have all of these feelings when they die and th- we don't know how to how to deal. Yeah. And that becomes a huge part of like guilt involved with the grief. And right. we can stay stuck in that for so long. Yeah. And I think, too, the basis of a relationship with an animal is so unconditional. Yes. As opposed to, you know, human relationships are different. Yes. At times. Yes, definitely. Some of the other things on this list were childhood trauma. Uh, It is Mm -hmm. very hard to handle childhood trauma and to deal Mm -hmm. with that and to heal it. Because a lot of times we don't even realize how much it has affected us. Yeah. We are, because it's in our childhood, we're just going on with our lives. And then all of a sudden we get to this point, a lot of us in our adult life where we go, why am I like that? 
yeah, certain things trigger you and you realize, mm-hmm. where does that come from? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, a couple of other things, divorce and breakup, mm-hmm. um, domestic abuse, religious trauma, loss of yeah. a job, job illness. Um, there's, there's a lot of things. There really is. Um, let's see. Jennifer said, I feel that... Oh, no, wait, this is actually from my sister, Amanda. She said, I feel that illness is the hardest for me to heal from, not from the affliction itself, but how I feel mentally about it. My illness is, in fact, self-inflicted. Although I am healing from most of the physical illness, I am not healed mentally or emotionally. I always feel that people are looking at me and judging. I am ashamed of what I've done to myself. Although I am proud of my healing, I think I am always carrying the shame. So since she mentioned it, I'm going to just talk about it, right. that my sister is a recovering alcoholic mm-hmm. and during COVID almost drank herself to death. Yeah. Um, I am so proud of her. Yeah. She came out of this and she's working again mm-hmm. and it's amazing. But she could have just decided she wasn't going to. She was just going to, right. you know, um, be sick and continue to be sick. She had to pull herself out of that. That takes a lot physically and emotionally mm-hmm. to heal yourself from all of the things that she went through during yeah. that time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, you should be proud of yourself. You should be very yeah. proud of yourself. Yeah. I know that we are all very proud of you. Um, let's see. And then I asked our listeners, what would you say is the hardest part of healing? And Number one was replaying the memories. Mm -hmm. And we had talked about this a little bit last week. When you replay those memories, it really does bring up all of those feelings again. And I had read somewhere, like I said last week, that when you have a memory, when you remember something, you are not actually remembering when it happened. You are remembering the last time that you remembered it. Right. So you can continue to make that hurt yes. so much. Yes. Um, you know, we've all had traumatic experiences in our lives. And right. there's certain things that I, you know, that I've done, we've all done things that are traumatic for me. And so one of the things that I did to get rid of some of these memories or to try and make it so that I wasn't beating myself up all the time is when the memory would come on, I would shove it out. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to make myself think about this because this isn't, this is the past, you know, it's self control. It, it, it's like being on a diet, you know, I'm not Mm going to do it. Right. Not going to do it to myself. You can, you can, you can put yourself there and keep yourself there and maybe even almost convince yourself like you haven't healed when you remember those memories and then the feelings come up, you know, you might tell yourself, Oh my God, I must have not healed because it feels so like recent yep, or it feels so intense. Well, no, it's, you have a good memory and that's how prominent, you know, or that's what a great impression that trauma or whatever caused for you right to leave such a memory that's so accessible emotionally right yeah. um so don't tell yourself you're not healing when you're working at trying to heal from it yep just Absolutely. because you feel it it can like we were saying earlier it can be more traumatic to go through the healing of mm. something that happened to you yeah. than the actual experience itself because that's when you have to face those things yeah. you know and facing the issue it, you know a lot of times we want to sweep it under the rug especially with like childhood trauma saying oh you know i, I i'm fine it didn't it didn't bother me so much right. but it is really there and it will be there until we deal with it uh, grieving over the loss of a loved one or even a pet um i think some of us can get stuck in this well, if I'm not crying and grieving and depressed all the time, then it doesn't mean I didn't love this yes. person or this animal as much as I said I did. Yes. That's not true. Uh, you know, this mm-hmm. is an amazing part about this process of grief and, and healing, is especially when it's like a, a loss like that. Yep. Um, and if it's a sudden or even an, an expected loss is that we go through a point where we're kind of sitting in our muck, you yeah. know, and we're down. And But for a lot of us, there is that message that we all hear in our head 
that says you got to pick yourself up Mm -hmm. and you have to finish the rest of your life. Yeah. I don't believe that's just magically a thought that every single person thinks. Okay. I believe it's put there either by the person or thing you've lost Mm -hmm. or by the creator itself to remind you that, again, we're each individually on our own path. Yes. And you have the gift of life to see that through yourself. And then you'll meet up with the others later, you Mm -hmm. know? Yep. Uh, Let's see. On this list, too, of what would you say is the hardest part of healing? Some of the other things our listeners said is not knowing where to start. And that is a good point. Mm -hmm. Because when you finally realize, you know, like, like I'll take, let's take my mom's death, for example, because that was one of the hardest things for me to heal from. Mm -hmm. I really did have to get to a point where I told myself, I can't do this anymore, you Mm -hmm. know, but I didn't know where to start. I had already Mm -hmm. gone through counseling. I had already done, you know, those, those types of things. And I'll tell you, I I honestly don't remember how I started doing it, but looking back now, one of the places that I hope I started and I think I did was by cutting out the sad music. Because the sad music kept me trapped in that um, perpetual cycle of of misery for so long. Because I thought that I was honoring my mom by listening to songs that reminded me of her. When all I was doing was dragging myself down. And and you had said something a little while ago, too, about how we kind of feel guilty Mm -hmm. for, like, moving on and being happy. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I felt like that. So... I'll tell you that because I talked to so many spirits on the other side and I know how they feel about these things, that is not at all how they feel. No. They want us to move on because right. death is not the end. It's just a transition. It's just a see you later. It's not a goodbye forever. Yes. No, they want to celebrate the memory, not mourn the memory. Yes. So, but they understand as spirits what it was like to be here and to lose something and be sad. So I think the most important thing is where to start is first of all, tell yourself or, you know, or pray whatever you'd like to do, meditate, tell yourself, talk to God, whatever. um, And say, I want to heal from this when, Mm -hmm. when you're ready and I want to move on and heal from this. Mm -hmm. And, Be easy on yourself, because like I said at the beginning, time is of the utmost importance. Mm -hmm. The time is going to do for you what nothing else can do. And that seems like a ridiculous cliche statement, but it really is. It is the ultimate healer. Right. Um, So, but just wanting and having that willingness, kind of like what I said before you mentioned your mom and, and... you heard this thing that said, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. That was mom saying, you can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not there, but you still have a life. Mm-hmm. And my memory is to be celebrated, right. not mourned. Yes. Because I'm still alive. I'm just in a place where, unfortunately, you can't see me. Right. But little did you know, <laughs> you would get to a point where you can. Yeah. And you can speak to her and you can hear her. Mm-hmm. So thank God that you didn't give up for whatever reason because of that loss. Yeah, absolutely. This healing is to teach us we can heal ourselves. Yes. So we have trauma and things that we learn because we have to learn. Yeah. And we have to learn the good and the bad. But part of what we can learn is that we can heal ourselves. Yes. We can With help. Mm -hmm. But we can do it with the willingness to want to do it. Mm -hmm. If you apply your free will to, I want to feel better. Yes. And I want to be over this and I don't want to feel guilty for it. Mm -hmm. I need to live my life. I have people counting on me, children, students, employees, whatever it is. Yep. That that willingness alone, it's like They need you to invite them to help you. Mm -hmm. They don't just do it because what if you don't want it? Right. What if you want to live in misery for the rest of your life? Then they're intruding. 
what are they supposed <laughs> to do? How how are they supposed to drag you out of it? Like right. literally, my mom could not, you know, drag me out. Mm-hmm. I'm sure if she could, she would have done it years earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you have to want to do it yourself, and. I don't, you know, every situation is different. And so you might say, well, how do I know? When is the right time to start healing? Mm -hmm. I think you'll know. Mm -hmm. I think you'll feel it. And, you know, I I can tell you that there was a point where I didn't want to hear anything from anybody. I didn't want, you know, their positive attitude or anything like that. But once I felt like I needed to start the process of healing, I listened to people more and I accepted what they had to say more instead of just shooting it down. You know, a friend of mine had bought me a book called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and it's all small stuff. And mm. I got pissed. I was like, are you saying that my mom's death is small? Right. Like, And she had put inside, you know, this whole thing about it doesn't mean that or whatever. Right. But um, it, after I started coming out of it, I went and I read that book. Mm-hmm. But I, I wasn't going to read it until I was ready. Right. You know, and so it really does all come to being ready. And it's all individualized of when we are ready. And there's nothing wrong with taking your time. If you're doing it the right way, if Mm -hmm. you are allowing yourself to grieve and to deal with things and whatever the situation is and not beating yourself up, you know, because we do have a a way of doing that as well. I want to read a few things from our listeners. Yeah. Uh, This is from Amanda. She said, I have been working so hard for the past two years on healing some things in my life with EMDR therapy And as of recent, started doing Reiki, energy cleansing, and some past life regressions with a wonderful local spiritual healer. She is helping me to explore to see where it could be coming from. Sometimes when I think, okay, yeah, I'm good. I feel like I'm handling things well. Then the universe will test me and nope, still there. And I just can't figure out why or what more I need to do to heal this part of my life. It's frustrating when you want nothing more. This is the way that these things happen Mm -hmm. because like, let's, let's say, you know, you think that you're healed from something. Let's just take a relationship. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, You think you're healed from it. You've worked so hard. And then all of a sudden you run into that person somewhere and you see them. How do you feel? Do you start crying? Do you text them when you get home and say, I miss you? Or do you go, (laughs) Well, what do you do that? I think will tell you if you're healed or not. And if you're, you know, immediately feeling this rush of emotions and all that, then maybe there's some more healing that needs to be done. And that's what the universe is showing you. It's not trying to say, ah, you failed. It's trying to say, maybe you haven't healed this as much as you thought you did. Mm -hmm. When something is healed, it shouldn't hurt really. I mean, I can't say that for everything, but when you're healed, you should have that contentment of, I've been through that, and I'm not going to look back and go through that again. I'm not going to put myself in that situation again, whatever it is, you know, so many different kinds of situations Mm -hmm. that we need to heal from. So, Amanda, please know that that's what the universe does. And for all the listeners, that when you feel like that, when you feel like, man, I, I felt like I finally was healed from that, and that happens... That's why. Yeah. So keep healing on it. Keep working mm-hmm. on it. And it, it will come around and you'll right. see. You will see. Trust me. I, I have so many things in my life that I've noticed this happen with. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm going to read a couple more of these from our There were some really good comments in the discussion mm-hmm. group that I, just in regards to why, you know, each individually the comments I thought were great as far as like why this is so hard. That's why I'm reading most of them. Um, So let's see. This is from Tara. She said, I've had the most significant healing and changes these past three years. I've always viewed it very much like a table. The healing is the tabletop and the legs are what support it. The more legs I have, the stronger the healing. Some of my legs complete sobriety, a Consistent spiritual practice, meditation, therapy, 12-step meetings, health care, connection with safe, trusted people, rest, joy, reevaluation of relationships, and strong boundaries and self-compassion. 
Yes. Mm. Yes to all of these. Yeah. Those are all, you know, strong things to stand on. Um, mm. We forget about things like she capitalized rest. And that is important. When you're going through that healing, you have to allow yourself to have that rest. Right. For sure. All of these things are great, Tara. Mm -hmm. And then Ed said, what you can't let go of holds you to it in like frequency. What you damn damns you back. Mm -hmm. Become aware of your expectations to outcome. See yourself as being exactly where you need to be for your soul to learn what it needs to know. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. It, and, and it's hard for us a lot of times to realize that this is what our soul needs for its lessons. This mm -hmm. is what it needs to learn and know right. because it hurts and we right. don't want to go through it. Yeah. You know? Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, Laura said, I believe that even if you can't fully heal, the fact that you recognize and work on it is the most important thing. Allowing yourself to take as long as is needed, yep. self-care and acceptance is crucial. Yes. Yeah. There's no one size fits all. Like we were saying, it's it's individualized for each person yeah. and no one can tell you, you know, you should be doing this in this amount of time or or that healing. Somebody is. said, it, I don't know if it was Jennifer, maybe one of the first comments in the discussion group, where it's like pre preconceived ideas is what makes healing hard, I believe. Let me uh, see. <clears throat> I want to say she was having... I, I could be wrong of who said it, but... Um, Let's see. I don't have many topics left. Jennifer said, it's been many years now since the divorce, but it, it was difficult to heal and move on from. And so I said, what was the hardest part of healing, do you think? And she said, letting go of my dreams and what I thought the rest of my life would be, at least that part that included him. Also finding the unbroken parts of myself and getting to know them again. Yeah. I'm thinking it wasn't in the discussion. I think there was a particular post maybe that, oh. that you shared. And so there were a couple comments in that. That was good too. Yeah. But it wasn't, sure I guess my point being is if any of us have experienced watching somebody else, like as a child, mm -hmm. if I watched somebody else I knew going through a healing process, mm -hmm. it taught me or showed me a lot of what that is supposed to, you know, do. Yeah. From, from like, how does it look from the outside? How long does it take? Yes. Um, you know, watching somebody grieve over a loved one that they've lost and, and kind of the guilt we were talking about. Yeah. I should be more guilty. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be more guilty. Um, I feel guilty if maybe I wake up one day after 12 days of crying straight and on the 13th day, I'm not crying. And all of a sudden, I, I get into this guilt trip mm -hmm. with myself and then make myself go right back into it. Right. It's okay to... Um, and if some of these things are uh, trauma that you've experienced, you know, whether it's abuse and that kind of thing, that you're a victim and you're always going to be a victim mm. because it happened. Mm-hmm. But it's okay to release yourself from being a victim. Yes. And perceiving the world as doing the same thing to you as this person or whatever it is that happened. Yep. Part of releasing that um, in order to heal. Releasing the guilt of not waking up crying when you're thinking about a parent mm -hmm. or a loved one or a breakup. Or whatever, allowing yourself to heal. Yep. I tell people going through grief a lot of the times that grief is a liar. Mm -hmm. It will make you think horrible things, mm -hmm. especially guilt. Mm -hmm. The guilt is horrible. Anybody that's lost a person or an animal, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've felt that. And you know that there's always the, oh, what, what could I have done? What should I have done? And those are the things that hold us back from healing. We, the past is the past. Mm. You can't go back and change the past. You can't. No. So you have to think about that and think, okay, well, I can't change the past. What can I do going forward? Mm -hmm. How can I make this better going forward? And considering, can, sitting in it and continuing to not heal from it is not going to help the situation. Right. It's just not. What will make it the hardest and why it may be so hard for some people 
is resistance. Oh, yeah. The resistance. Mm -hmm. That you have to accept that this thing happened. um, And then you have to be willing to spend your time mourning or being upset. But then you have to pick yourself up. Yep. This sometimes does involve the help of others and loved ones and friends and family that are around us. And then sometimes we're left on these things totally alone. Mm -hmm. And that's a bummer. Yeah. But that's to show us that we can heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, We can do this. Yes. You can, um, when you're sick of sitting in the shit, so to speak, you'll eventually stand up Mm -hmm. and walk out. Some of us, it takes a little bit longer. And that's okay. It gets back to the time issue of, you know, you could put yourself through more misery and allow yourself to stay there. Mm -hmm. Or you can listen to that, what I believe is a divine calling or inner voice, if you want to call it that, that says, okay, it's time. I can't, I can't keep going like this. Right. Totally. It's time. Yep. Yep. That's you talking to you or the other side talking to you and yep. telling you, okay, you've spent enough time here. Let's try to make it better. Yep. Absolutely. And listen to that. Follow that. Because when you're not hearing that as much, then you're probably on the right track. Mm-hmm. Yep. I agree. Uh, so let's see how much time we have. Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about how do I know I'm healing? Because a lot of times, I don't think we even really know. Mm -hmm. We just get into it and then, you know. Um, So one way is you begin feeling your emotions instead of suppressing or minimizing them. Um, You allow yourself to cry. Anger begins to dissipate or turns more to sadness or confusion. Mm -hmm. Anger masks healing. Yeah. It just does. When you're that angry, how do you heal from it? So I think any time that we feel anger in a situation, we need to take an extra special look at that. You know, we just did an anger episode recently, didn't we? Yeah. Yep. Goes back to that. Uh, let's see. Your body begins to feel better. You're less stressed. Um, issues like headaches, fatigue, stomach issues. We were also, you wanted to talk, I know, a little bit about um, physical, mm-hmm. healing yourself physically mm-hmm. and, and how, and that, and how that is a big part of this journey right. as well um, on this planet. When we have emotional things that happen to us, a lot of times we hold them in physical areas. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a listener and a friend of mine whose mother is sick right now, and I told her that I would send her mother some Reiki and I said, send me a picture. And she has um, a tumor in her esophagus. And I started feeling all of this stuff. And I said, your mother, she has a hard time voicing herself, like speaking up for herself. And she said, yes, her whole life. So we have these chakras, these Mm -hmm. energy centers, and we hold things in those energy centers. So when we don't speak our truth and Mm -hmm. we don't or we don't speak up, Mm -hmm. we hold things in our throat chakra so we can make ourselves sick because of the emotions that we're holding in certain areas. Your heart chakra you can do the same thing there. You know, if if you're dealing with broken heart or you don't speak your truth in that area or whatever, Mm -hmm. you can hold things in that area. It was very interesting for me to do this for her because um, I could feel like this congestion, so to speak, and this years of just things being trapped in there. And, and it, I really understand more about how this works and it is absolutely possible to heal ourselves Mm. of these physical traumatic things, but also the emotional things that keep us held back in physical ways Mm -hmm. like this, you know? So I don't know if you had anything you wanted to add on that subject. No, I definitely believe, you know, it's real. Do I believe that we can, heal ourselves of everything uh, whenever we want no i don't believe that the human race is to that point yet but i believe that we can be um but even like a scratch on your arm when you think about it it, even when i talk about time being so important when we're healing from traumatic emotional experiences or, or losses 
a, a cut on your arm is a great metaphor in general because that cut has to happen, the blood has to clot, the scab has to form, the skin has to bind underneath it, the scab has to dry up, fall off. Yeah, it's a process. It's a process that it takes time. But your body alone is healing itself. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right there in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very slow process. You can't see happen really quick. But so if that's naturally doing that, your body's designed to heal itself. Sure is. Right? Yep, it sure is. That's evidence that's telling you on the outward that's what your body's meant to do. Yep. But if you keep injecting the poison... It's not going to heal. That's right. Absolutely. So you have to stop that. And the poison can be many things. That's up for us to learn what our poison is. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, So anyway, so yeah, when we start to heal those things and our body feels better, like literally you might notice <clears throat> less headaches. You have more energy. You know, I, this is definitely something I noticed that like when I was going through my divorce, I felt sick all the time. I just, I, I remember thinking, man, I have no energy. You know, once you start to come out of it and you start to feel better emotionally, it really does change the way you feel physically. It yeah. really, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. If you don't believe me, Try it out. See, you know, on the days that you're feeling better, more emotionally, you probably feel better physically as Mm -hmm. well. Yep. So. I agree. uh, Let's see. So back to how do I know I'm healing? You're more welcoming to people. You appreciate hugs and words of affirmation. Like I was talking about my friend that gave me that book and how Mm -hmm. I wanted to throw it at her at first. (laughs) But I appreciated it after after time, after I, I had started healing a little bit. Um, You reach out more for help. You may show your more vulnerable side easier. Uh, There's a part of a lot of us, I think, that makes us want to be strong. Mm -hmm. And when we go through something that makes us vulnerable, we put these walls up because we don't want people to see us be vulnerable. But that's what makes us human. And that's what makes us who we are. And you know what? I love people that are, are... able to be vulnerable and Mm -hmm. put themselves out there like that because it shows a real level of love and compassion and if you're hard and you're just like "Mm, this isn't affecting me i'm fine you know Mm, no we're supposed to evolve yeah you know we're like everything else that on this globe and the universe we're supposed to evolve and not go i'm going to pick this type of person and i you know because if so and so runs into me five years later i don't want him to think i'm any different yep well why what's wrong with changing change is important yeah it's very important and we should all be doing it Mm -hmm. uh let's see your triggers begin to guide you towards healing you know i thought for a long time that i was healed as far as childhood trauma as far as my mother went And then um, Marina moved in with us full time Mm -hmm. and she was having issues with her mother Mm -hmm. and it was triggering me because things were very similar. And I felt like, okay, I can't be healed from this if I'm being triggered, if things that are happening to her are making me memories come up and all of that. So I had to work extra special hard on healing myself because you know what? That damaged little girl in me, if she wouldn't have worked on healing those things, would have repeated the same behaviors. So I had to take those triggers and I had to change them. I had to heal them. And it wasn't easy. Right. It's but it's not meant to be easy. No. I think you know when I I said for so many years I don't want kids. I didn't want kids of my own. And the universe gave me one um, that isn't my own. But let me experience what it is like to be a mother. Oh yeah. And also has taught me a million and one lessons so far about mm. my own childhood and my own mother through the experiences that mm. I've had. It's not easy, but it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to teach us Mm -hmm. all of it. It's supposed to teach us. And what you went through with our daughter uh, not only helped teach you about your own trauma and lessons, but it was part of the healing process for you to not repeat the same things that were done 
to you. Yeah. Is part of the healing process. Not only did it help you help heal you, but it also helped heal our daughter. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not easy. It's not. Um, But recognizing that you have triggers is a big part of any issue, you Mm -hmm. know, and seeing, okay, what, what happened there? Why did that trigger me? And how am I going to make it so that next time that doesn't happen? Um, Facing the things that happen to us whenever they happen to us, whether they were in childhood or as an adult, just recognizing that they were a, a part of our life and, and it's okay because that's a part of our story. Mm-hmm. These things do heal us. Yeah. They do in so many ways. So many ways. Let's see if what else I have on my list. Uh, I think that's all that I have on that list. But one thing that I did put here that I wanted to remind, and you actually started with this, is that this is a process that takes time. Mm-hmm. Time is the biggest healer. Mm-hmm. It really is. Um, yeah, it is. And, you know, when we're in a situation, we say that and we go, man, I don't want to put this time in. You know, I don't want to go through this again. Like, that's my thought whenever, like, somebody else dies is I don't want to go through this again. Right. You right. know, <laughs> like, this hurts. I don't want to feel this. But that's a part of life. Right. And we have to remember that down the line it won't hurt so much anymore. Yeah. And whatever the situation is, a a divorce, a a job loss, um, these things all happen to us the way that they're supposed to, Mm -hmm. to help us in life, to teach us, to guide us. Um, Nobody is going to get out of this life without having to deal with things that they need to heal from. Nope. Nobody. Nope. It wouldn't be life if, if we did. Nobody. You know? Yeah. Nobody's got it grandiose. I don't care no. how it looks from the outside. No, no, no. We all have things. We really <clears throat> do. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, and they're all different. And that's what makes us so unique. And right. um, recognizing other people's trauma right. and triggers is important, too. Yeah. Because I think it's important when, like, in a relationship that we don't trigger each other. If mm. we know each other's triggers, that we don't do that. We right. don't push those buttons because... That just makes things worse. Like, right. we should want to help each other and heal each other and not push those <clears throat> triggers, yep. you know? So. It's hard because there's lessons to learn. Mm-hmm. And I can't think of, you know, any schooling that I ever did that I walked in and thought, oh, this is simple. Yep. I got this, no problem. You know, once I learned how to do that, then that became simple. But then there was something more complicated right behind it. Yep. It's hard for a reason. It's not hard because it's punishment. It's not hard because you're cursed. Um, It's not hard because there's an evil force working against you. It's hard because this is what shapes our soul. This is how we learn. Mm -hmm. And we're only viewing it, in my belief, in one life right here. Yes. Yeah. But as we go to the other side and we realize how many other lives we've lived and how many more we're going to probably live, we have a greater understanding of why all this is necessary and why it is hard. That's right. Because we learn the most when we are faced with challenges and mistakes. That's right. Yep. Absolutely. That's when we learn the most. Yep. As hard as that. Because we're more aware. Mm -hmm. Of getting to the the better place. Yeah. How do we get to the better place? You know, like the happy place. Yeah. You're more aware. You're you're focused and driven to get away from the sad place to the happy place. When most of us, when we're in the happy place, are not seeking to get to the bad place. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No. So you're not learning as much. Yep. You'll learn that you love the happy place, but you learn more when it's hard. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> it's true. I agree. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Very good. Yeah. I yeah. hope that that helps some people with, you know, that it might be struggling with healing because it is hard, mm-hmm. you know. And that's what our discussion group is for, too. Yeah. The, the, our discussion group is great. They they talk in there and they meet, they make friends and, you know, it's a safe place to talk. So if you have these types of things that you would like to discuss, join our discussion group yeah. because it's it really is a good, safe place. 
Yes, please, because there was some great input on this one. Yeah, there really was. And uh, and there was always a lot of great input. But just know that if you want to heal, you can. Yeah. And you will. Yeah. Um, unless you do something drastic to get in the way of that. I think no matter what, we all heal, whether you want to or not. Yeah. If you don't get in the way and do something stupid, yeah. you, you heal on some level. Yeah. But you can heal more. If you really face it. True. Yep. But you can and you will. Yep. Very, Very good. good. Yay. Well, that was awesome. Yeah. Before we say goodbye, though, would you like to uh, share your page one more time? Yes. You can find me at Samantha Jones Psychic Medium dot com or us at Spiritual Joneses at Gmail dot com or on social media at Spiritual Joneses. Yay. And you, sir. Yes, again, for my art, djonesartcollection.com, for the web, at djonesartcollection, for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And just to throw out there, uh, the website, I do offer prints of various sizes of all my pieces. So Yay. That's Check it out. why I keep telling you to go there. Yep, go there. Look cool. at it. That's all I got. Great. Well, we hope everybody did get something out of this. Yes. I did. Me too. And, um... Go out there and heal yourself. Yeah. You know, you can do it. And heal others, too. You can do that. We hope everybody has a great week. That we do. And until next week, peace and love.